Hey there and welcome guys to the PCBSD YouTube channel. My name is Joshua Smith and today I'm going to be walking you guys through just a simple little tutorial on setting up your uh, virtual box virtual machine with PCBSD. Now a lot of you are probably already familiar with PCBSD but this is more of a tutorial uh, maybe for those who have not used PCBSD or want to see what PCBSD is like for the first time uh, as we are going to be walking through the virtual machine setup and also uh, going through a quick install of PCBSD. So let's get right to it. So over here I've already got my VirtualBox package installed. We're just going to wait for that to come up here. Okay great. I don't have any virtual machines set up at the moment so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new machine. Um, we're just going to give it a simple name here. You can name it whatever you want, of course. And when we go to type, we do want to select BSD. Version, this is important. You do want to select FreeBSD 64-bit. PCBSD is based on FreeBSD, and it is 64-bit only. So if you do not change that, um, it will not install properly. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next step here. I've got quite a bit of memory in here, so I'm going to go ahead and just bump that up quite a bit. There to 4 gigabytes. We do need to go ahead and create a virtual hard disk. We want to at least give it 50 gigabytes of space. Um, that's generally the minimum recommended amount for PCBSD, so um, do make sure you give it enough or your install will fail. Okay, great. So it looks like it created the virtual machine here. So I'm going to go ahead and go into settings, and I'm going to pick my ISO image. We're going to click on storage. Go down here to the little CD disk looking icon. Alright, and we are going to choose a virtual disk. Now all of these images, the most recent images, can be downloaded from PCBSD.org. So um, if you want to kind of follow along or just download the most recent image, just go to PCBSD.org and you can grab our latest, most up-to-date version. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use this this image right here, this RC2 10.0.3 ISO image. Okay, great. It looks like we're ready to get started now. Um, now you can adjust your VirtualBox settings if you want. Um, if you have a, a better setting than maybe what I used go ahead and you can change that now but for uh, this demonstration we are ready to go so I am gonna go ahead and press start okay we don't need that notification okay great now this right here is the very first screen you're gonna see when you boot the PCBSD um, image uh, what you'll first notice probably is it says PCBSD slash true OS installation um, this is a dual image. It does contain the full install for PCBSD, but also it includes a true OS image. True OS is basically FreeBSD. Um, it's kind of our own rebranding, if you will, of FreeBSD. We go ahead and we take a lot of the, uh, the hard uh, elements out of the install. Um, for instance, we can go ahead and set up your networking in the uh, true OS installation. Uh, very easily through kind of a semi uh, semi GUI display it's um, it's more of a menu system if you will all command line based but um, anyways I digress so for this demonstration though we're not going to mess with true OS for this demonstration we're gonna go ahead and continue with the graphical install for PCBSD Alright, so we're just going to want to give it a minute here. It's going to run through its initial 
initial code here, it's initial boot up process. And just a few moments it will boot up into PCBST's installer. Now one important thing uh, to talk about with PCBSD, PCBSD is fairly memory intensive. Um, a lot of operating systems you can use with a minimal amount of memory, not necessarily true for PCBSD. Um, while it will work um, on one gigabyte, two gigabytes of memory, you do generally want to have, we recommend that you want to have at least four gigabytes of memory in your system for it to function properly. That is because we do use the ZFS file system that is highly advanced, it's extremely fast, but because of that file system, it is memory intensive. So do keep that in mind um, if you start it up and it's not running quite as fast as my system here. Okay, so we're at the start screen here for our installer. We can go ahead and pick our, our language. Uh, for me, I can understand English the best, so I'm just going to click next here in a moment. Um, we do have a couple of things here you might find beneficial. Right here we have a hardware compatibility diagnostic. You can just click on that if you want and what that'll do is that will bring up a little window box here and that window box will tell you if your hardware is compatible or not. You can manage your network connectivity here. This is help if you're having issues on whatever current screen you're on. This is an on-screen keyboard if you need a virtualized keyboard. Right here you can switch between keyboard layouts um, if that is beneficial to you. And here is the emergency shell and utilities. If you get in kind of a pickle and you need to just drop to an emergency shell and run some uh, shell commands to uh, get your install fixed or just rescue a system that's already existing that has issues, you can drop to an emergency shell here. So we're going to go ahead and press next. And you see here you have a couple of different options. Um, your first option here is a desktop install, which is what we're going to do today. And I'm going to just briefly touch on these other two. Um, this is the server TrueOS install that we talked about. Um, this is if you just want to install almost a, a vanilla FreeBSD just with um, PCBSD's helpful installer kind of helping you along. Um, this right here is a restore from Life Preserver backup. If you have previously made a backup of your system and then had some kind of catastrophic failure, you can just go here, click on Restore from Life Preserver backup, and press Next. And the installer is going to um, restore your system from that backup you made at a previous time. Uh, very intuitive, very easy to use. Now you'll see here there's a Customize button. If we click on that, we can select whichever packages we want to include. Okay. So right here we can see drivers included. Okay, we don't necessarily need the NVIDIA driver, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Oops, there we go. And let's check under desktop. What what do we have here? Scroll a little too fast. Okay, I don't want to take KDE. So let's uncheck KDE. and I am going to check XFCE because it's a little bit smaller package for the purpose of this demonstration. KDE is a great um, window manager, a great desktop environment, uh, but it is rather large. So uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, move a little quicker, we're just gonna use XFCE as our desktop environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Save, and we can go ahead and press Next. Okay, this all looks correct, but if you did want to make some changes, maybe select a different partition, you can click your Customize button right here, and you will have some advanced options. Right here you have Basic, Advanced, and then FreeBSD Experts. If you are just unbelievably good with FreeBSD, you can just click on this and type in all your commands manually. Um, so we're not going to go into each one of these individually, but just wanted to show you guys we have a few different options there. You can also save your configuration um, to a USB drive. So say that you have 20 systems that need the exact same um, pre-configured configuration. You can go ahead and save this install configuration on the first one 
and roll it out across multiple systems without ha having to type in each individual um, GUI assignment, without having to go into each um, GUI menu here and setting, say, your uh, partition layout and setting your desktop environment and your packages. All that can be preset as long as you save it and then reload it later on a new system. Okay, so we can go ahead and press next and it's ready to start the installation. So I believe we have everything in order, so we're going to go ahead and press next, or press yes rather. Okay, great, and we're off and running. Alright, looks like we are finished now. So. Here is that option we were talking about earlier. Um, you get another option to save your configuration to the USB drive. So keep that in mind if you did like the configuration that you used on this system and you don't want to have to duplicate it over and over, just save that to a USB stick. Um, and if you have to deploy that across multiple systems, it shouldn't take long. Okay, so now that we're all set, we're going to go ahead and click Finish here. And I'm going to unmount my disk as soon as it's ready to restart. There we go. And we are booting up here for the first time. So this will just kind of give you guys um, a quick idea of what to expect when you're booting up PCBSD on your system every day. This will give you a good kind of gauge on how long it'll take, what it's going to look like, and the first time initial setup when you log in it's really quick and super easy so not a whole lot to it I'm sure you guys can figure it out no problem alright since we are in a virtual machine we're in virtual box it says it wants to use the virtual box driver which is just fine we'll go ahead and click yes click yes a couple times <laughs> There we go. All right, and we are going to go ahead and proceed in English for the purpose of this video and select our time zone. I am in the Eastern United States time zone. So let's see if we can find something here. Here we go, close enough. All right, we'll go ahead and click next. You can pick a system host name if you want to set something custom right now. For me, that doesn't really matter too much. All right, so you're going to go ahead and enter a password. And I promise I am going to delete this virtual machine afterwards, so you don't have to worry about my one-digit password. <laughs> you do have an option to encrypt your user files. Um, just bear in mind if you are going to use this um, PEFS encryption is what we call it right here. It is your home directory. All your files inside your home directory will be encrypted. If you do decide to use this, keep in mind there have been some issues with KDE um, and the PEFS encryption. Um, some kind of freeze ups and things of that nature. Something isn't playing nice, so just keep that in mind. If you do decide to use that, you, you will probably experience a freeze up uh, every now and again. It is recommended just to use the uh, Jelly encryption and not use this if you're using KDE. So we can go ahead and press next. And it says your setup is now complete. Please press finish to log into your new desktop. All right, so let's press finish. Okay. And right here, if you have multiple desktop environments installed, you can choose between them right here. Anytime that you log in or log out, you'll have the option to choose. All right, so here's my user account. We can go ahead and log in. And great, here we go. Now, this is just for XFCE. You don't have to do this for every desktop environment, but I'm going to just use the default configuration. And it'll just go ahead and assign some icons for me and set that all up. All right, so this is what your desktop is going to look like um, inside PCBSD when you start it for the first time after a fresh install. We have a couple of things here that you might find helpful. We have a PCBSD handbook. 
It's this uh, file right here. You can open that up if you have some questions. Um, if you need to know a command, maybe where a GUI is that you want to try to use, open that up and give that a shot first. You'll probably find your answer no problem. Um, we also have the App Cafe, which is going to be our kind of our app store. If you want to go there, um, you can find all kinds of software. Do keep in mind you do need to be connected to the internet um, to use the App Cafe. So just bear that in mind. And then we also have the PCBSD control panel. Uh, the control panel is just going to house all of our utilities um, and also the desktop environments utilities. So if you do need to change settings, that's going to be where you are going to go. This is just a simple welcome screen here. Um, I don't need to see this, but we'll scroll through it just briefly just so you guys can see it. It's going to just kind of give you a few quick tips here on getting connected to the internet. Also the App Cafe, which we kind of talked about in configuring your system. All right, so we can go ahead and close that out. All good stuff you may want to pay attention to, you know, when you're doing your installation of PCBSD. Um, but that's about it. We're going to go ahead and end this video now. It's just simply to show you guys what PCBSD looks like um, after a fresh install. Uh, so if you have any questions, leave those below um, or send me a message. Or you can also email me at joshms at pcbsd.org. Thanks so much, guys, and have a great day.